Welcome folks to the introduction video of writing a convolutional neural network from scratch in PyTorch. Uh, in this video we're going through different steps of writing a convolutional neural network from scratch and uh, I'm, my goal here is to um, again make short videos that um, each of them carries a specific message of for example how to write a data set or how to define the training loop. Let's take a glance at the final product of this video series together and then while getting this glance uh, you will get a better idea to uh, which video works the best for you in order to watch. So um, here we are, this is the complete version of the notebook that we're going to make in uh, this uh, video series. We start by touch basing all of the steps that are listed here and obviously we're going to import um, some necessary packages. Please, please don't get overwhelmed be, with the uh, number of packages or modules that I import. Uh, one by one you will learn how to use these packages or how to remember which packages you really exactly need to work with. And uh, so therefore in the very first video we write the necessary packages for writing the model class which is as you can see is a very simple two-layer uh, convolutional neural network model. We also test the model as we always do right after writing the class of the model. We test whether the, the class is written right by uh, creating a random image with a specific dimension pass it into the model and then see whether we would get the right dimension as we expected. Next we would write hyperparameters device model optimizer loss function. With regards to hyperparameters uh, it's totally up to us, up to the person who's writing the model, that which parameters they want to set as hyperparameter. And this distinction of parameter versus hyperparameter is just something that we have made up and that has to do with a specific definition. In the language of machine learning a parameter is something that you never change. A hyperparameter is that you allow yourself to change that parameter in the future so that you would be able to fine-tune your model and get better accuracy or better recall or better results basically. So we touch base all of this information then we, uh, I basically show you where to download the data and how to visualize it. This visualization has nothing to do with, the, uh, with machine learning. We're just going to use matplotlib pyplot functionalities in order to randomly call eight images within our flower data set. And we're going to benefit from labeling of these panels in order to know, for example, which image number we used, uh, we called, and what, what label do they have. So basically, which class they belong to. And uh, after that, it would be in coding video number four that we would uh, basically um, write a, a PyTorch data set on top of the images that we downloaded. So we have what we have as data set is basically single images that we download. But PyTorch expects a dataset class uh, defined and wrapped around these images and then we need to work with the dataset. On top of that, PyTorch expects a data loader class to be wrapped around the dataset that itself is a class that is wrapped around our images. These are simple tasks to do, simple classes to write, but can be very, very confusing for people who don't know where to start getting their information about them from. So these are very important things that we're going to touch base and after very short five, six, seven, eight minute videos you will learn how to handle data sets and data loaders in PyTorch and you will see how easy it is to handle this. Right after making the data set we're going to uh, again visualize our images after fitting into the data set and you, you will see how, transform, how transformed are the images after wrapping them around the data sets. And then we basically train the model. After training, we're, gonna, we're not going to stop, obviously. We're going to do some more stuff. For example, the first thing 
as always is to write the check accuracy function and allow ourselves to train the model again and see how the model is doing in during testing and uh, at the end the, the seventh coding video I will teach you how to add a progress bar just as something that is implemented here how to add a progress bar to the training process so that uh, we would basically get some information of like where we are in this process of training and uh, by doing that we're, we're going to basically make the results of the model more user friendly and uh, and yeah that would be it I'm so excited to uh, go through these course with you and um, basically I can promise you that uh, by the end of these video series you will know how to write a convolutional neural network and that is enough for you to create a foundation of uh, CNNs and then from there we're gonna build up our skills adding more capabilities to our Im image processing and computer vision uh, capabilities so let's move on to the first coding video where we are going to write the model class together I'll see you there